The college football landscape is rapidly changing. Can Utah football stay on top in the NIL era? We're going to discuss on today's Locked On You. You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On Utes your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms, including YouTube and wherever you may get your podcasts. If this is your first time listening to our show, make sure you like and subscribe. Love interacting with all of you in the YouTube comments as well as on social media, where you can follow our show at X, on X at Locked On Utes today. My name is JT Wister, so former intern inside the University of Utah Athletic Department. Excited to be joined by Spencer McLaughlin, the host of Locked On College Football, maybe with some Oregon affiliation as well. I can't remember. For those of you who are watching, you might be. No, I just have. Have have the Oregon flag up no particular reason yeah yeah not trying to rub it in at all about this last last season anyway, but I didn't anyways, say anything anyways, hey so. I didn't yeah, I didn't yeah, say yeah. anything <laughs> but let's fast forward to looking ahead to this coming season Spencer and honestly just the future of college football NIL is just continuing to dominate I mean look at the war chest Ohio State used to build their roster right like the amount of high level recruits they were able to land in part is because I do think Ryan Day is a good coach, and I think a lot of the Ohio, the slander he gets is ridiculous because, yes, Michigan was also it has been a very good program under Jim Harbaugh. We'll see how they are this fall. But a lot of these teams are loading up year in and year out because they have these deep NIL pockets that they can pull from. Utah does not have NIL access like an Ohio State and or a major SEC team and all things of that nature. So the question then becomes, can Utah continue to dominate and not dominate? Can they continue to do very well in the NIL era? Because they had a lot of success going into the Pac-12. They're now transitioning into the Big 12. I believe they still can with how well they do recruiting and developing players. And they still got a solid enough NIL grouping. We've seen they've still been able to keep some really key pieces, right? But how do you see it as it pertains to Utah's chances at continuing to be a powerhouse in the NIL era? Well, if it's all about trucks, Utah is top of the line, man. I mean, there's just nobody that, that does it better in the truck department. You talk about fitting into the Big 12. That, that's about as Big 12 country as it gets, uh -huh. giving everybody a bunch of F-150s. I, I think it's a challenge. I, I don't think Utah is ever going to be one of the top NIL players. But, you know, in, in conversations that I've had with people that – cover recruiting JT Brian Smith our locked on recruiting insider just just one of several people who who I've uh, conversed with about this NIL is a factor and if you have a lot like an Oregon for instance or an SMU or an Ohio State or you know all all these big places that that have money to give to players via uh, or that are coming from the transfer portal or via the high school ranks that's all good and fine it's never going to be the entire equation and you, you will find the occasional kid who is just looking for the biggest NIL offer. I know that I know for a fact there have been high profile recruits that Oregon has gone after some they've gotten some they have not gotten who were just looking for the biggest NIL amount that they could find uh, in both the high school and portal ranks. Those kids are more of an anomaly. So I, I think the formula for Utah still works. It still fits to win in college football to recruit good players. Certainly you, you'd want to see Utah bring in you know top 30 classes perennially to remain competitive at the highest level but i mean you look at the big 12 who's the next best recruiting team in there i mean is, is it, is I it mean, colorado's doing better right colorado is technically the right answer because of how they recruit the portal but they've punted on high school kids for all intents yeah. intents and purposes so I, I don't think that they're your biggest competitor in the league for high school players which is where utah has done a lot a lot of damage and so i i think for utah their model works just fine and will continue to work because most uh, the kids who are going to command top level nil dollars if we're being frank probably weren't looking at utah anyway and Very you true. know <laughs> on, on the on the flip side of the argument you'd say well now they don't have as good a chance to get those kids whereas they might have been able to okay that that's a fair point but utah has been a model of consistency and has been just so good running their system the way that wit wants it to be run that, that that continues to work especially in the big 12 where you don't have big recruiting powers you i mean you've got four out of 16 teams in the league that were playing at the group of five level an hour ago 
You know, so I, I think it's kind of the best league for Utah to be in if you think about NIL as a concern. I think the portal is a much, much bigger part of college football and formulating rosters. And certainly NIL plays a part in that, but it's not as much as everybody thinks. Make a great point, too, in talking about the portal and getting the experience, guys. That's something Utah's done a really good job of, too. Sure, they have recruited and developed the Devin Lloyds, the Dalton Kincaid, to your point those under like the radar guys, not the recruits that everyone wanted at the time. There were rumors that Kincaid Alabama made like an NIL push for Kincaid. I don't know if that was ever confirmed, but either way, those were guys that came into Utah and grew as players at Utah and had immense success. So Utah has those guys, but then like, let's look at the transfer portal they brought in last year, right? They did a great job identifying needs. Well, you know, Brent Keithy's coming off of an injury. It'd be nice if we had another tight end. Let's go grab Carson Ryan from UCLA, who I know we only had over, not a ton over 200 yards, but good player. Was that, yeah, exactly. Very good player. Like, good player. Moore wasn't exactly lighting things up this last season there. And it'll be interesting to see what he eventually looks like at the school's colors. You're currently repping after Dylan Gabriel is going to be done with Oregon. You look at the running back room. You get a guy in Anthony Woods who's coming from a big sky school, right? Shout out big sky. Had a thousand yards rushing at that school a year ago too. Other guys, Keenan Johnson, Cameron Calhoun, a couple of cornerbacks because you lost a few cornerbacks too. You brought in some veteran safeties as well. So that combination of having guys that rise up and develop and finding the proven commodities in the transfer portal to help fill in the guys you lose each year and just the holes you have in your roster is something that's essential to staying at the forefront of college football. And Utah's already proven that they can do a good job going out and getting talent they need to come in to replace the best guys they lose each year. Yeah, and and I think bringing in guys like Dorian Singer are a great example of that. Mm-hmm. Because that that's somebody who who has, you know, a lot of production and pedigree. In, in his college football career, and he ends up going to Utah. Why? Because he knows he can go there and win and be a part uh, of the offense. And I think that's the perfect position for Utah to continue to try and you know expand their talent pool on a year-to-year basis. Certainly the tight ends, yeah, they are developing a great reputation. Kincaid is a stud. Keithy will be a stud in, in the NFL after this season. And you know, that, that, that sort of stuff can snowball at a position in the best way where it's like, hey, I'm watching these guys go, you know, like Ohio State with wide receivers or LSU and defensive backs once upon a time. You watch them and you go, well, hey, if they did it, there, I, I kind of want to be there. I want to be associated with that group of guys as they go off to the NFL. So I, I think for Utah, that's where, you know, they can really utilize the transfer portal to their benefit because they, they've they've – gotten solid quarterback play you know what's the plan for cam rising that's a conversation for next offseason but the yeah. running backs will be there you know the offensive line and the physical culture will be there the tight ends will be there. will the receivers also be there when you're going to a big 12 conference that plays a lot of offense typically doesn't play as much defense you might be in more 43 42 shootouts like you had against usc a couple of years ago at, at rice eccles so I, I think Utah is is in a good position overall and, and should feel confident about how they can navigate this landscape. Are they going to bring in the consistent level of uh, high-end talent that they need to compete for a national championship? That remains to be seen. Right? That's tough. I think, I think this year is going to be a real, real test case because Utah should be very, very good. And if they sure. win the Big 12 the way I and many others expect them to, and they make the playoff and they have one of those buys, how they perform will be really, really telling. Because I think this will be one of the best Utah teams of the last several years. That includes the conference title championship teams. And yeah, you lost guys from last year, but I, I think that this Utah team should be really, really good. And how they perform will factor into how you should feel about them going forward. They have so many key returners from those championship teams as well as great added pieces. You mentioned a Dorian Singer and all the great things that he's already accomplished at the collegiate level. Now coming over to be that wide receiver one that camp. Devon Vele was very good, but I think so- Singer can reach another level that Vele wasn't necessarily able to, which should really excite Utah fans. Spencer, I did not have LSU defensive back draft shade um, that you would throw on my bingo card for this episode, by the way. Well, but I, I mean, point, it used to be a thing for him, and now it's, it's just a, not. Stingley was the last guy. That was the talk of the entire year was LSU doesn't have a defense. So I think you're absolutely right there as well, too. Be interesting to see if they could get back on track there. They completely revamped their defensive staff. They went and got the guys from Missouri because they were really good. And they were looking Uh around at their defensive staff going, wow, these guys are bums and then clean house. (laughs) 
You know who's not a bunch of bums? Utah. And Joel Klatt doesn't think so because he has them ranked inside the top seven, six overall. Spencer, want to get your thoughts on that? And if Utah is truly one of the top contenders for in the college football playoff this coming season, we're going to be diving into that in one moment. But first, want to talk to you about one of the sponsors of today's episode of Locked On Utes, our friends at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. You can keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Spencer, looking at this Utah team this upcoming season, you just mentioned you expect them to win the Big 12. Joe Klatt, also a part of the ranks that expects Utah to do so, hence why he has Utah ranked sixth overall in his current top 25. I think this is absolutely fair when you look at all the returners, Kyle Whittingham, and Utah has a decently easy schedule this year, so maybe some of those road letdowns that they had won't be a part of it this year. You also think with the injury luck that hit Utah last year, they should be able to stay at least a little bit healthier this coming season and get back on track and be you one of those You would hope. Teams. Oh, my gosh. Yes, we're hope. not – I'm knocking on wood right now, my friend, as soon as it, because you got to do it when you're talking about how bad it was last year. But I am curious for you, someone who, once again, hosts Locked On College Football, covers all these teams nationally. Where do you have Utah right now? Well, I haven't put together my own top 25. I'd be hard pressed to put Utah anywhere outside the top 12. I, I think that mm-hmm. Cl- Cl- Clat had him at six. He did. That might be a touch high. Might might be a, a touch high, and I think is a projection based on the fact that they're the favorites as they should be to win their conference. And if they do so, they'll wind up with one of the top four buys in the 12 team playoff, even if they are a 10 and three or 11 and two team, because the 12 team playoff is stupid and dumb. And I hate it anyway. I just, I get that out there every chance I get. How How many episodes of your show have you spent ranting on this? Um, you know, not very many because people would probably get tired of it. Like people don't get, people don't get tired of realignment. They'd get tired of me telling them that. I mean, I've mentioned it many, many times over the last no, couple of years. No, really? Yeah, no. I know. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the 12 team playoff is really, really stupid. If you'd like to talk with me about why, I'm happy to talk with any of you out there. I'm on X, formerly known as Twitter, at S McLaughlin CFB. You can see the handle right there below if if you're watching here on YouTube. But yeah, I think I think it sucks. And I, I, I think Utah is very good. I think having them probably closer to nine or 10 might be a, a more appropriate place to be just because you do have a question with Cam Rising. Is he going to be able to stay healthy this year? I, I, I hope so for his sake. I, I think so because he didn't play at all last year. But do I know so? No. And I think we saw last year you know, how how important he is to that Utah team. And the fact that they were able to win eight games is a remarkable coaching job. Like, if you want any evidence that Kyle Whittingham is still sharp and he's still got as a head coach, why did that Utah team win eight games last year? Because they, they shouldn't have. You gave that team with Bryson Barnes back there and all the injuries to any other coach in, in the Pac-12. I don't know who's winning. I don't know who else is winning eight. Um Kalen DeBoer feels like he would have found a way because he just doesn't. I'll give, Lanning, I'll give Lanning some love like you on the show. I, I think mean, Lanning look, I, lo- like, I, lo- I, I love Lanning. He's had Bo Nix for two years as his quarterback. Like He's never had an uphill battle as tough as that. It's true. That is, that is, that is by far the t- – that, that would be the toughest battle. So, and so anyway, I, I think that Utah is, is in a great position and, and should be a preseason top 12 team. I would not go in the top six. I'd probably put them in that six to 12 range. I, I think there are other teams whose overall talent level, I probably trust a little bit more, but there are not many coaches with that talent that I trust as much. For example, 
I think Mike Elko is a good coach. I would not put Texas A&M ahead of Utah, even though they've probably got more composite talent, which they almost certainly do. Yeah. They brought they've in. Been, yeah. And have and have had for years, I'll also yeah, mention. Yeah, probably. exactly. And it's a different coach. It's a different coach, mm-hmm. so they should be treated differently. It's still a believe it when I see it. Cultural elements mm-hmm. to sports teams yep. or programs can get ingrained. And I think Texas A&M has that, you know, kind of imposter syndrome that they have to yeah. – they have to buck. They got to get that monkey off their back because it's 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 what you think of when you think of Texas A&M football. It's highest ranked recruiting class ever. Ever. What six wins? Seven? That's like that's like terrible. just wildly, wildly underperforming. So uh, yeah, I I think you I think Utah's in a good position. I love that Clad is high on him, and I think he is because he knows how how good Winningham is and how good Utah is capable of being, but I think six is just a touch high. I mean, one thing going but definitely Utah's way, and we both think this Utah roster is very good, but the fact that they only have to play two teams also listed on his top 25 is a huge benefit for Utah. Yeah, they get Utah a huge State, scheduling or- break going yeah, into Oregon the State Big 12. And- yeah, Oregon State and Arizona, and I know for those of you who don't listen to Spencer, Spencer is not a huge fan of Arizona this coming year. He thinks they lost a lot, so they're a team that could potentially well, be Well, I just don't think they're a Big 12 title contender, which, you know, will, of course, yeah. rile up Arizona fans, but, like, that's <laughs> that's just the that's just the nature of uh, of the business. I don't have any animus towards Arizona. It's more, than, it's more than quarterback. We saw Shador put up great numbers in a couple of those games last yeah. year. Yeah. They yeah, yeah, a great were, Colorado had a great quarterback and a great receiver last year. And guess what? They oh. went four and eight. You need a team. And Arizona has lost a lot from last year. They lost a handful of starters. Uh, plenty of the transfers are not going to start at Washington. I understand that. But they lost a handful of starters to, to the Huskies, who have the same win total as Arizona with a harder schedule, by the way, because Vegas thinks they're closer than uh, a lot of Arizona fans probably do. And then you look at what they don't have from last year. They have no Jacob Cowing. Okay, like Tetsuro McMillan is great, but they have no Jacob Cowing. They have no Jonah Coleman. Uh, they lost uh, Morgan, Jordan Morgan, I think is his name, the big offensive tackle. They lost Bill Norton along the defensive line. Ephesians Prizok was an all-conference caliber corner. Like, these are not small departures. They lost Tanner McLaughlin, their, their tight end, who was a p- big part of their passing game. Like, these are big losses. I don't see Arizona bringing in the sort of high-level talent to easily replace those guys. And Jed Fish is not their head coach. And, and and here's the unfortunate part as we turn this into an Arizona podcast. Arizona, <laughs> with Jed Fish staying this year, would be my favorites in the Big 12 because they didn't just hey, beat yeah, Utah yeah. last year. But Utah fans know that game was not close. Okay. Yes, was, there were injuries, but yes. Yeah, was what yeah, ex- exactly. But Arizona was really really good. And so if he sticks around and all those guys stay, Arizona is playoff or bust this year. Instead, I think they're just a slightly above average team in the Big 12. I think you make a really, even though I was protesting, they absolutely would have a, a fight to be one of the favorites in the conference. I do definitely agree with that. Yeah, they would. I think if they got this, I think if they got to the conference championship game, that could still be a win just in terms of their progression. But I also get the argument that you're making in terms of the talent is so much there that it's worthy of being a top 12 team. So that's where this does become really interesting. And one thing I do want to do with you really quick, rapid fire, I want to give you the top 12 let's do top 12 because you said six to 12 teams and you can just tell me if you think the team i say is definitely better than utah or debatable let's start with ohio state and georgia both better uh texas is next better oregon better not shocking you said that five ole miss better you would go better still okay shout out jackson dart this is where things get interesting because he has bama uh utah six bama seven and michigan eight michigan is too high Oh, too high. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Michigan is too high. Bama. They did lose a lot. Bama or Utah next year? I I Debatable? can't pick. I'm sorry. I can't pick against DeBoer. I, I go. I go. I lean Bama. You just were talking about how great Kyle Whittingham is, and the fact that you don't know of any other coach. Yeah, but okay. Kalen DeBoer's all time record is like 111 and 12. He's. A, I know it's incredible. I couldn't believe Bama fans. Like his, win, his, his winning. His winning. His winning. Like. <laughs> His winning percentage as a head coach is unlike anything I have ever seen. 
He he doesn't endure the dog days of a rebuild. He just takes over no. and wins. There's just that's mm-hmm. it. That's that's all there is to it. Take over, win games. Next. That's it. Yeah, I think he's going to do really well at Alabama too. And the last four teams, Penn State, Missouri, Notre Dame and Penn Florida State, State is Penn State is close. Um mm-hmm. Notre Dame is close. Missouri is close. I think those are all toss-ups. Yeah, I feel the same way. I think it makes a lot of sense that all these teams kind of grouped in together. And it's going to be fun to see as we get closer and closer to rather than us just talking about maybe this could be the case. Some of these teams will actually play each other that are inside, not Utah. Of course, we already talked about the breaks they get in their schedule, but some of these other teams get to face off. So it's going to be fun to see how that works out with all of them. But Spencer, we do make a really interesting thing in talking about Utah. Their regular season schedule is pretty easy. So does that mean they have to win the Big 12 in order to get in? to the college football playoff. That's what we're going to be talking about in one moment. But first, I want to talk to you all about our great and glorious friends at Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace for the NBA, which makes getting playoff tickets even faster and easier with prices on the Game Time app actually going down the closer it gets to tip off. They have great last minute deals, all in price views from your seat and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time truly takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. There are so many features I love about Game Time, whether it's zone deals or flash deals, where you can save even more with exclusive in app deals on selected seats ahead of the game, or those zone deals allow you to choose a section and let Game Time choose your seats for a great deal. They also have their seat views. So you get a panoramic view from your seats in the app before you buy. Also, that low price guarantee where Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference if you find tickets for cheaper. And with the Game Time ticket coverage, your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So you can take the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets with Game Time. You can download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College. That's capital L. Oh, and college, all of that capitalized. So locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E. For $20 off, download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. All right, Spencer, does Utah need to win the Big 12 in order to make the college football playoff in 2024? Most likely is the way I will phrase that. If they are 11 and 1 and they lose the Big 12 title game like Oklahoma State did a few years ago, losing to Baylor, there is a there is a good chance they get in, not a surefire deal because what you would then be looking at is you're comparing a two-loss Big 12 team to a two-loss SEC or Big 10 or one-loss ACC or uh, you know, a uh, twelve and one G five, like th- these conversations can come into play. So, I I think it's hard to see an eleven win Power Four conference team not getting there. But here's the thing: that's what the context would have to be because if Utah doesn't win the Big Twelve, then they went and they went ten and two in the regular season, ten and three overall. You're out. Three lost Big Twelve. That won't happen. And what's crazy is a 10-2 and two Utah team will have its playoff hopes on the line in the conference championship game, and it will either miss the playoff or get a top four seed and automatic buy. Yeah. Because there is no way a group of five champion is going to be ranked higher than a Big 12 champion. That's not going to happen. And... This is why auto bids are stupid. Like I'm saying, so, like it's just, it's just, they're insane. They are insane. Or think about this: what if a nine and three team? This, this, this could all transpire. A nine and three ACC or Big Twelve team in the regular season wins the conference title, ends the year at ten and three in an inferior league. They could get a top. Four seed and first round buy, and you could have a ten and two SEC team miss the playoff altogether. Okay, you got to admit that'd be pretty funny just to watch the SEC fans lose their mind. I would lose my mind. (laughs) (laughs) That would be like that would be insane. I said recently on my show, I I hold two thoughts at once, which blows people's minds sometimes. (laughs) SEC bias is very real. Don't deny that it exists. It's also incredibly warranted. Fair. Absolutely. I mean, they've won so many. I mean, all, I mean, 
Yeah, they're just better. They like, I'm sorry. I'm, Michigan, I'm sorry they Michigan got broke, Michigan broke through this year, and I mean, what was it? Clemson before that, and LSU, and Georgia, and Bama, and repeats, and rinse, yeah. Like and I mean, you know, Clemson yeah. has kind of been an SEC style program. They're certainly not now. They, I don't. I don't know. I don't know about Clemson. They say no to they. We were talking earlier about Utah embracing the transport. I th- at the time we're recording this, Clemson is still not added a transport. No, they're not going to. No, no, no. It's not that they haven't yet. And they're wait. No, they're not going to. Dabo just says no, and I think that approach is equally as intriguing, though less headline grabbing, than Dion going all portal and saying, yeah. "Forget the high school kid. I'm just gonna bring in." several dozen players, an entire team via the transfer portal. And look, there's, I'm sorry, PETA, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And I don't know where that phrase comes from, but you know what I'm trying to say. So I, I, I think that watching those two programs is going to be utterly fascinating this year because they are quite literally at the opposite ends of the spectrum. Colorado gets out recruited by like Eastern Michigan from the high school ranks. Like, the, 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 That's, yeah, yeah, because they don't, they're, they're just saying, no, we're just going portal kids. All portal all the time. Okay. Let's see. Some, they, way, I thought, I wasn't sure that the more than one way to skin a cat was actually used for cats or another animal. It actually is more than one way to skin a cat. So I'll give you credit there. I thought that, I thought it was another animal for some reason, because you just oh, don't think about skin cats. So it is a weird phrase. Yeah. I've never once thought about doing that because I am not in an insane asylum, so. Yeah. <laughs> Instead, you stop by here and help enlighten us on the world of college football. Spencer, Precisely. we always appreciate you stopping by. I will say I agree with everything you said. I think that Utah, it's going to be hard pressed for Utah, especially as those losses potentially stack up. The more they have, the more it's obviously going to be tougher, but it is crazy to think even a two loss team could get left out. Definitely on the table, depending on the strength of the schedules and records that some of these other teams have. But there is a lot of chaos still set to play out. We still got some portal stuff happening. If people want to stay up to date in the world of college football. Where should they head over to? Locked on college football, of course, on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts, covering the biggest stories in the greatest sport on planet Earth, Monday through Friday, all year round. Over there, and if you happen to want to know anything about Oregon, Locked on Ducks, same sort of deal. And remember, if you guys are riled up about his playoff takes, it's at Spencer CFP. He's, at he's S. McLaughlin CFP. CFP. S. S. Yes. McLaughlin CFP. You come at me anytime, we'll talk about it, and I will explain my reasoning. <laughs> I look forward to seeing everyone jump on you then, buddy. <laughs> All righty. That's going to do it for our show today. Spencer, thank you as always for swinging by. That All will time. do it for us here. We'll be back with you tomorrow talking more things Utah football and Utah athletics.